Hello everyone, my bedtime story tonight is all about David Attenborough. Now the reason I've chosen this story is because my boys and I love watching the David Attenborough programmes all about nature and animals and all the things that he tries to do to save our lovely world. I hope you enjoy it. Little David grew up in Leicester, England with his parents and two brothers. His father was the head of the local university and they lived on campus, a great place for curious minds. David loved nature and animals, ants, birds, chameleons. He was fascinated by all the species he read about in books and wished he could meet them in real life. He often went on long cycling trips to find and collect fossils. There was something amazing about plants and animals that were thousands of years old. One day, David received a parcel from a friend with a new piece for his collection, a dried seahorse. It wasn't his birthday, but it was the day that he decided to become a naturalist. David studied geology and zoology and obtained a degree in natural science. But he didn't want to just observe animals, he wanted to meet them too. David started to work as a broadcaster in television, a new technology of the time. He brought animals from the zoo to the studio. There were very entertaining guests. But David wanted to film the animals in their natural habitats, their homes. He started to go on trips all over the world. Wherever he went, he made new friends. He met turtles on the Galapagos Islands and gorillas in the African jungle. When he visited Antarctica, he was introduced to all the members of a penguin family. One of his programmes, Wildlife on One, became the most popular in British history. It was a brilliant show about biology that united audience of all generations. Later, David was honoured for his incredible documentaries about life on our planet. He also received a knighthood and today is called Sir David. Many animals and plants were named after him. A rare butterfly, a snail, a prehistoric lion, a spider, even a carnivorous plant. Still today, David cares about the natural world. Wherever he goes, he encourages people to do their best to look after it and believes that humans have the power to preserve it. And little David still looks at the world as if it's huge and unexplored because there are always new things to discover if you take the time to look for them. I hope you enjoyed the story. Thanks.